What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the FC07 Beginner Bike Customized Build Series, whatever you want to call it. This is actually the last episode where we're going to be doing stuff to the FC07 before we give it away. So check out the link in the description below to learn more about what's going on with all that. But today, super simple stuff is going on. We've actually just installed our brand new S22 tires on our FZ07. Um, I'm super stoked on these. Bridgestone actually provided these tires to us, which is really, really great. Um, I had really, really good experiences with the S21s on my FZ09. So I'm very, very excited to see how the S22 perform and how they feel. Uh, our previous tires were the Pirelli Angel GT is more of a long durability sport touring kind of tire in my opinion. The S22 is more of that kind of proper sport bike tire. So I think it's gonna suit the character of the FZ07 really, really well. The other thing we got going on is of course, our fuel controller. A lot of you guys have been asking about this and I totally understand why um, fuel controller is very, very, very important whenever you do a full exhaust on a bike. Uh, I've only put about 200 miles on the bike since I put on the full exhaust, so not a big deal to run it for a little bit without the tune, but I am super stoked to have this on and then going to be placing it on the bike and get it so that the air to fuel ratio is correct for the new exhaust system. So uh, should be an easy one today. Uh, I've done this before on my FC09, so it should be just be a case of popping off the seat plug and play, do a little laptop work, kind of walk you guys through that. And uh, yeah, we should be good to go, so let's get started. So as I've mentioned, we've actually done uh, one of these Bizazz fuel controller installs on a motorcycle before, uh, but let's open this up and kind of see what's going on with it. These fuel controllers are really, really cool because um, basically what they do, especially Bizazz, I've had really good experience with them in the past, which by the way, they did not sponsor this video, I've just used them before. Um, basically, it comes pre-programmed for the exact bike and make and model that you have. So if we pop this out, you can see here that uh, this is actually the flash instructions for a 2015 FZ07, which is the exact bike that we have. Um, so this should be pretty simple. So we're just gonna kind of run through the uh, install of everything and go from there. A couple wiring harnesses, which is great. It's exactly what we need to connect the unit to the bike. Uh, we got a nice little micro USB cable to patch through to the computer to wire that all up. What you need to do is actually uh, install a couple stickers too, which is always fun. What you need to do is install the software on the computer to then route the whole thing up. So it's pretty simple. Again, lucky for us, Bizazz is a great company and they do everything really nice and neat for you to, to kind of walk through and start. So let's get started. Alrighty guys, we've finished up installing the Bizazz fuel controller here. Um, Pretty simple stuff, pretty much just plug and play. The only annoying part was, as I mentioned, we couldn't get this gas tank off because one of these screws over here was stripped. Tried using a grab it, the grab it didn't take, so I had to kind of creatively get into where the uh, little connectors for the fuel injectors were and all that. I will spare you guys watching that because it was just kind of me uh, grunting and being boring while trying to get this all back into place. Uh, so let me walk through everything that was connected here. So the unit sits in place right here. It's attached with a little Velcro. Uh, we tapped into the rear light for power here for the 12 volt. So we tapped into that right there. Uh, moving on right over here. This might be a little bit tough to see and especially all up in there, but um, basically there's four connections that we made. Uh, we had to connect the throttle position sensor, which was right over here in there, uh, kind of in there. Uh, and then we connected to each of the injectors for the motorcycle, that way we can control the fuel. And then we also connected the CPKS system over here. Not quite sure what that is, but it mentioned to uh, put it in and out. Um, the way that this works is basically the fuel controller sends information into 
the bike, but then uh, the actual fuel controller also has a little end terminal that the original factory connector plugs into, so there's nothing dangling outside of it. Um, it's about as plug and play as you can get. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is while we still have everything disassembled, just in case we didn't connect anything correctly, which I believe we connect everything correctly, but we're gonna double check our work. We're gonna download the software onto the computer and then uh, check if everything's looking good and then go from there. So now we're going through, we just downloaded the Bizazz software. We're going to install it onto this device. Shouldn't take but a minute. So now we're going to connect the device to the computer. Um, pretty simple stuff. It's just literally a little micro USB cable attached onto the device. We'll just plug it in like this. Keep this little cap somewhere safe. Uh, let's put it right over here. And then <clears throat> attach it right there. It powers up because we've got it on power, which is awesome. I'm gonna restart the software because it seems like it likes it whenever you start it up and it's already connected. So now you can see it's communicating with the device. We're gonna zoom in on this computer here so you guys can see that a little bit better. So luckily um, we can see here that it says it's the 2015 FC07 enhanced map. Um, this is a pre-programmed map for this bike with the full system, which makes it really, really simple to kind of just plug and play. Um, the Z-Mapper software is pretty cool in that you can actually go through and do all kinds of stuff yourself. Um, I don't really know too much about that kind of stuff, but what we're gonna do now, according to the manual, is we're going to, because everything matches, we see it's map one, we see it's the 2015 FZ07, everything is looking good. What we're gonna do is start the vehicle and begin to check that the following inputs read correctly, which is the RPM, the throttle position, and the other stuff too. So let's check that out. are matching the bike's RPMs, which is a good sign. It means everything is connected correctly. The throttle position is being read as well. You can see the RPMs climb. You're seeing higher throttle inputs. It's really good. All right, guys, now that the FZ07 has the enhanced map attached to it, I've verified that the uh, uh, fuel controller is working all correctly, which is really cool. I'm glad I got it on the first try, honestly. Um, now we're going to uh, piece everything back together. It shouldn't take too long. It's just a bunch of four millimeter bolts um, to put all the plastics back on over this gas tank, um, which honestly, weirdest gas tank design I've ever seen with this like weird plastic situation, or this is metal rather, this metal situation here with all the plastic around it. Um, really bizarre. I, I wish it was like the FC09 where it's just like the tank and then you just pop it off. I don't know why they did that, but uh, yeah, anyways, so we're gonna get all the pieces back on and then we're gonna slap on these S22s and then we're gonna go take it out for a little spin. It's probably gonna be tomorrow that I'll do that, but I'll put it in the same video, give you some initial impressions on the S22s, uh, some cool features about the tire. Uh, I'm really, really excited to try them out because I really like the S21s I had on my FC09. Really curious to see how they'll fit the FC07 and the character of the bike, so stay tuned for that. All right guys, what is up? Welcome to day two of uh, our little excursion here, uh, doing a couple of items on the FZ07. Uh, had to wait until the next day because look at this wonderful weather. It is literally like 70 degrees, nice and sunny, crisp blue sky here in Texas today. Super excited to go ride. Um, we are checking out the new S22 tires we put on the giveaway bike. Um, super duper excited. I've already taken it out a little bit. I've stopped here for gas and to kind of put up my camera and stuff. But boy, I got a lot to talk about these tires. Uh, they are really, really good. So we're going to ride about 15 minutes uh, due east to go to one of my uh, favorite little roads back here. And we'll discuss the new S22 tires we put on the FZ and what makes them so good in my opinion. But of course, sound check, sound check, sound check. So one quick thing I did want to note before we actually make it to the road, um, this fuel controller made a world of difference on this motorcycle. Um, I've said it before, but whenever you get a full exhaust like the one we have on this bike, you want to make sure that uh, 
you properly tune the fuel system otherwise you'll be running lean and that's going to cause you problems later in life um, but yeah boy the uh, the on throttle feel is so much better now it's so much more precise it feels really dialed in really good feeling Alrighty, so we are turning on left here onto this nice little road that uh i go down on to ride my bike what what, what sense am i trying to say right now <laughs> So the first thing I want to note about the S22s is just how, like, rail, oh my god, like the, the precision you have when you're leaned over is unbelievable. It feels like you're so dialed in. Um, I mean, comparing it to the Angel GTs is a little unfair because the Angel GT is more of a, a, a touring tire in my opinion, it doesn't really compete on the same level as a Hypersport tire like the S22. Um, the S22 competes with the likes of like Dunlop's Q4 and those kinds of tires as a, you know, sport bike tire you can use every day, but also take to the track on occasion. The other thing that I really love about the S22s versus the S21s is the feeling you get when you dip into the corner is much sharper. Um, I remember I used to have S21s on my FZ09 and I used to only run Q3s on my Daytona because I really preferred the Q3s like razor sharp kind of like samurai sword-esque nature whenever you got onto a lean but the S22 because of its new compound and because of the way the tire has been built um, it feels incredibly sharp uh, it feels really really sharp um, I've also looked into a little bit of the research they did behind this tire and it's you know the, one of the cool things is they're using different compounds a couple advanced technologies to actually increase the life of the tire because as many sport bike riders know you're lucky to get even like five to six thousand miles out of a rear on a Dunlop Q3 or a, you know any one of those other tires so we're just dipping to this corner right here and I gotta tell you the level of confidence I have in this bike is so much higher now I feel like I could take that corner twice as fast, but I won't because we're out on the street here today. But you really feel like you can just pitch it in and it really just does exactly what you want it to. Now this road, obviously because I live in Texas, is not as tight and technical as I wish it was to really put this tire through its paces, but um, it does a really good job of just like taking a couple sweepers and seeing how it feels. One of the cool things about this tire as well is um, it has three compounds in the front layered out as you get closer to the lean angles, the maximum lean angles, and then you have five layers in the rear. Um, this is done, and, tires, and, and tire manufacturers have been doing this for a while now, where like the middle stripe of the tire is uh, nice and hard so you get long longevity out of it. Um, but then the rest of it is softer. So as you pitch into your leans, you're not gonna be, you know, wearing out the tire. The other cool thing about the S22 is it has better wet condition grip than the S21s had. And that's done without sacrificing overall grip levels because when you design a tire to be good in the wet, usually it's not gonna be good in the dry. If you've ever seen MotoGP tires that are for wet conditions versus dry conditions, they look completely different because you have to take into account, you know, moving water out of the tire. You have to take into account um, how air and water is going to be moving through that tire whenever you do that and the compounds are going to be different as well but Bridgestone through doing some advanced technology work on this tire have developed a way to give it better wet weather condition and um, make it a better tire overall because what you really want out of a tire is especially a tire like this where the the variables and the constraints are pretty high in that you know it needs to be capable for a track day needs to be capable for road duty and road duty does include wet and dry conditions um, in the past you know tires that have been kind of good at everything are kind of bad at everything too in a way they're not really great at any one particular thing um, very demanding track day specialists and guys who are amateur racers and that kind of thing will find the s22 i think to be not as uh, good as you know something like a proper race tire or a slick but you know for those guys they're probably going to buy separate tires for that kind of thing i think the intended audience for the s22 is the guy or gal who has a you know maybe one motorcycle in the stable it's kind of their do everything bike and um, they don't want to feel compromised by their ability to, to take it on the track or have some fun with it on a back road but also commute with it you know 
Um, that I think is the intended audience for the people who are buying the S22. So I could really see someone who owns like a, a Street Triple 765 and they uh, use it to commute to work occasionally. Maybe they have a car as well, but they use it to kind of travel around town. Uh, maybe on weekends they go with their buddies up to the mountains and have some fun. And then maybe once a quarter, every half a year, they take it out to the track and rip it around. The S22 is a tire that you're going to be able to do every single one of those things with, which I can really, really appreciate from a tire. So overall impression so far is that man this thing feels really solid i didn't know they, they could improve on the s21 other than that initial pitch and feel but it really does have really good kind of laser precision when it comes to pitching it in yeah it's really unbelievable like even like doing parking lot maneuvers you have so much confidence in this tire like right here we'll pop a little u-turn and you just feel like it's never gonna like slip out at all like you feel so positive with this tire it's such a good feeling like it's really really strong okay all right let's let's do this a little bit here predictable in that you know the power at the top is not really going to scare you honestly and you can ride on the street here without really using the brakes much and it's pretty much okay suspension's a little bumpy but that's all right Okay guys, we're only going about 65, I think the speed limit here is 55, so we're really not, you know, killing it or anything like that. Um, I just want to make that abundantly clear that we're not going super fast. All we're trying to do is just trace a nice line and have some fun here. Yeah, so overall impression of the S22, this is a great, great tire. I think whoever wins this bike is going to be extremely pleased with the levels of grip and functionality that the S22 provides. Uh, it's actually super cool because the S22 isn't even out yet. Um, I don't think you can even buy it quite yet, which is really awesome. I think they're just starting to now really uh, make the first couple, uh, you know, versions of the tire and get them out to dealers and distributors and all that. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. This is actually the last episode of the FC07. Uh, next week, we're going to announce the winner and reveal the new bike, if all goes according to plan. Uh, it's a very, very tight time schedule I have because uh, I'm doing a little bit of traveling here and I have to come back and then buy the new giveaway bike. But um, yeah, it should be good to go. should be uh, revealing the new bike in the, in the next episode and revealing the winner. And we'll go from there. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.